This is Hell for Leather. Over the next hour, we've some of the wildest bike antics on film. If you like it on the limit, we've got what it takes for an adrenaline overdose. Race action is where we start. If you like sticky rubber and men in leather, sit back and enjoy. Get mad, get even, hate everybody. Red Mist. How to look cool when the world is upside down and you're bleeding. So you think you know how to party? Think again. Winners are grinners. Experts and amateurs, cunning stunts from performing punks. All revved up and ready for action, your host is the biggest name in bikes and this is what he does for a living. to a world champion. Carl Fogarty then takes his first Northwest 200 Superbike race win. that sticks in my mind racing wise was uh, some of the antics that you've got up to I mean one in particular with one of your favourite riders John Kaczynski 96 oh, at Assen <laughs> yeah. taking him on that last corner what yeah. did it feel like? Unbelievable! <laughs> oh, it felt great obviously I mean Assen's always been one of my favourite circuits it's probably my favourite and uh, it was a hard race uh, all the way through and uh, he was quicker I had a broken rib actually he was quicker the last two corners before that chicane I was having a few problems around there and I knew that you know, he was, he was always going to have a go there, but I braked as late as I could. Uh, we both did. He went in, I think he got in too hard, slipped off the footrest a bit, went wide. I banged it back down to first gear, got on the gas real hard and headed for the line. And we, we made it by about a quarter of a second, I guess, or something. I don't know. It was brilliant. Good, good racing. What were you thinking of when you, when you were right with him in the middle of the turn? Was there anything going through your head or at that point is there nothing going through no, your head? No, there's nothing at all. It's just a case of trying to stop on, get out the turn and get on the power and you know, see what happens. Kaczynski closes, Kaczynski Here he comes. closes. This is the run down. It's going to be close because Kaczynski's right there. Kaczynski is going to try and make a pass in this again. He's up the inside of Fogarty. Again, Fogarty oh. holding. Kaczynski drops in. Can Fogarty slip team him on the line? Yes, yes. It's going to be Fogarty over the line. Oh. Fogarty wins. The Honda was a quick motorcycle, Monza comes to mind, yeah. um, particularly when you managed to somehow on a slower motorcycle yeah. beat them to the line. That's right, yeah, that was uh, in 99 at Monza. Uh, and uh, I, there was a saying that came from that that sort of still, you know, even said now that, you know, I never give in. Carl Fogarty! 
and the crowd have got potty. They've given it to Carl Fogarty. Carl Fogarty has been declared the winner. Colin Edwards has gone back into second place. Yeah, you know, size does count. Well, another track that's really, really quick is Hockenheim, and something that sticks in my mind, you're a mean devil when you're on it, aren't you? <laughs> Your best friend from down the road, Neil Hodgson, was in for his first ever World Superbike win. And what do you do to him? Uh, past him. Buggy! Oh, brilliant! Buggy! Oh, Hodgson goes off the track, a disaster for him. He came to the breaking point, and I braked later than I'd ever broken. And just as I grabbed the front brake, I just saw red on the inside. Buggy! It was pretty obvious who it was going to be. <laughs> and then uh, Yanni Gawa passed me, and then Whitson passed me, and I thought, I can't believe this, and then went into the next corner. Now, th that was a big, stupid mistake. I just braked too late, ran off the track, hit all the straw bales, went through the gravel, a few marshals, rejoined the track and finished eighth. So I was really chuffed. Slipstreaming, another particular <coughs> art that, that you know, many don't understand. I mean, how difficult is slipstreaming? What's the art of slipstreaming? Um, well, to get as close as you can to the guy in front without running the back of him, you get right behind somebody, it's scary, because you, you soon get sort of dragged, dragged along, you know, as soon as you, you catch that slipstream, you get sucked into him, so, you know, you've got to, you know, make sure you just judge it right to get out of it, to get the, the full benefit of it. Some are better than others, some, I'd say I'm somewhere in between, I'm not the best at it, because I don't like to get right on the back wheel before I pull out, where somebody like Harger would probably touch your back wheel before he pulled out and pass, you know. Is Arga good or is he just nuts? Oh, he's definitely both, okay, for sure. Doesn't matter which way he passes. Now then, what about a group session? It all gets a bit intimate, doesn't it? We can see uh, <laughs> well, someone on the back there struggling to keep with these boys, but a group session, do you know which way you're going to go? No, not here. I mean, you just get to the inside, that's what I'd do, and that's what Troy does here. He passes a whole lot of them <laughs> straight yeah, but, into yeah, but the Bayless, loop. What a mission. That was a good move, that. He's look, he's did well to anchor it up there, because you get a, such a draft off them guys. Now, this is a classic from Aaron Slight on Colin Edwards. Colin Edwards might have thought he'd won this. Is he going to pass him? Yes, he is! Perhaps off the back of your success, things have got a whole lot more aggressive in British Superbikes. Neil Hodgson, he used to be a bit of a softy once. What happened to him? Yeah, he's going good now, for sure. Um, it's funny, since I got injured, he's just uh, transformed him somehow. He's riding really well, really aggressive. Uh, just stepping into my shoes, maybe. Even at world level, Neil and Chris Walker took a leaf out of your book. Some uh, killy bashing going on here. This is a race that did it for him. You know, the one I was uh, away absent, injured, and the two boys did me proud. Duff Killy up on the last lap, and uh, he just lost the plot. Or he had a problem with the bike, I don't know. Hodgson got past, Walker got past, he went from first to third after leading the race the whole way through. What do you reckon Keely's thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so if you raced in British races, would you still fancy your chances? Not after watching these boys on these circuits in Britain, it's just, there's just no room at all, is there really? Is aggression and intimidation oh, yeah. a key to success Absolutely, now, definitely. Um, you're better off learning at uh, British stuff before you go into world stuff, really. Up towards the chicane now, into the braking area. It's going to be Aaron Slight. Can he hold on to it? Corsa's got... Here is Corsa on the brakes. Is Corsa going to do it? Yes, he goes through. Superb stuff from Corsa. What's he gets move? in front at the chicane. And Aaron Slight, unless he's got something absolutely remarkable up his sleeve, is going to finish in second place to Troy Corsa. Last corner then. And that was absolutely brilliantly judged by the Australian over the New Zealander. It is Troy Corsa who takes his win and thwarts Aaron Slight. Aaron Slight can have no complaint about that. It looks like a war. It's a production bike war. Who's going to be into the braking area first? Northwest time then. Yeah, scary that is. I mean, 190 mile an hour down to about 40 mile an hour or whatever to uh, Metropole. That's uh, got some good brakes there. It's a great place to race this. I love it. Northwest Tour. Crowd of fantastic people. Are great. Still Duffers at Church, looking back at Jeffries. This is the perfect camera. I'd rather have a camera on board. I certainly wouldn't be riding billion with him. Up the hill, Black Hill, we head now. Onto the coast road very, very soon indeed. Watch for it leaping over any moment now. Approaching the left hand, and it's a leap onto the coast road right now. There we go. Oh, dear me. That was the leap. That's Jeffries. <laughs> what is he on? That's probably a good question. And what do you do when you're in the middle of a dogfight like this? Panic. <laughs> Get out of it. Get to the front.
Yeah. Are some guys prepared to do whatever it takes to win? Will they just bash you out the way? Yeah, I think some are. I think the guys who are maybe not going to win the title will, you know, take that extra chance to win a race. Uh, Harga is one of those riders that will really stick up the inside of you uh, and risk a, you know, a real risky move on the last lap to win a race. And uh, here he did the same and it worked for him. He pulled it off and won the race at Hockenay. Oh, <laughs> Keely was so lucky there, and so was Slight and Fogarty. Oh, wow, is that, it. It? is that it for Slight? Oh, oh big pushing and shoving. This is Keely going straight on, and he's so lucky. Everybody's so lucky not to get the whole pack skippled now. You see it now, he's gone in too fast, he straightens up, he might have clotted. It. Basically, he's out of control here. Back at the front, here we go, at the front again. It's Slight still leading from Fogarty, from Keeley. I tell you what's going to happen here. Fogarty is going to slip stream Aaron Slight to the end of the line here. And it's going to be Carl Fogarty again. He's going to be right out of, here he comes, he goes. into the breaking now. Look at Aaron Slight, Aaron Slight is holding off the inside line. He's going to outbreak them all. Maybe Slight is going to be holding on to it. But, oh! Carl oh. Fogarty! Drag race to the it's, lines! It's gonna be Keeley's gonna get across the line in second place. He might even make it a first. He's gonna get by, is he? He's driving past Slight. Slight goes second. Keeley leads. Fogger in third and Corsa fourth. What a finish to that race. Another great super bike race. Now 70 mile an hour, no brakes, a solid fence uh, around the outside yeah, suit. Yeah. I know, I thought I were crazy until I saw these boys, they're just mental aren't they really? <laughs> I mean they are, they just, they don't care, no brakes, stone walls all the way around. I think they've got air fencing now which is going to help. But yeah, only in some, when, not in all races. When, when these boys crash they just seem to flip around all over the place and take usually other people with them. Apart from an unhealthy lack of fear, anything else you've got in common with these guys? Uh, no. I'd like to have a go at this, I must admit, it's one of those things that I'd like to have uh, I've had a go at at some point, in, in, you know, before I end up as old as Yuki. Now this next, <laughs> thanks mate, now this is my moment of the year, Poland's Thomas Golov showed commitment uh, yeah. here. I like this guy, I must admit, when I watch Speedway, he's a guy I look out for, he's just so brave, he just stick it in anywhere just to win a race. Okay, Speedway's got solid fences, but you preferred at one stage solid walls. Apart from Joey Dunlop inspiring you to hit the road, did this old fella coming round on number yeah. 16 have much influence on you? Number 16? I have the old fella. Your dad? Looks a bit fat there actually. <laughs> well, <laughs> to mention what, that to him. That's what you've got to grow into. There we go. Now you said you didn't go near curbs and things. There's no footage of me going near any of curbs, that's for sure. I kept three or four foot away from any curb. The TT is different. You don't slide the bike around the TT. You're not on the brakes. You know, backing it into corners or anything like that. You're not. You're not using every inch of the road. I mean, I never did. Most of the corners at the Alaman, you, you're in middle of the road stuff. I don't think you. You're not. You're staying well away from the curbs. Or I was anyway. Now, one I know that you really wanted to win that took you a long time was the Northwest 200. Yeah, that's one of my favourite places. I used to love racing in, in Ireland, and it's one place I, you know, I miss racing now. And <clears throat> the Northwest is, is the biggest race. Uh, and every year, I seem to have so much bad luck there. I, I led the race, brought down, led the race, brought down. This went on for about three or four years, you know. And the last time I was there was in '93 with the Ducati, and uh, qualified on pole position. I thought. Well, usual thing, Alan. I'll probably lead tomorrow and uh, break down. And uh, there's a, a funny story to that because uh, an Irish guy, I can't remember who he was now, he said, oh, you need a bit of Irish look, you boy. You wore something green tomorrow. You'll be all right, he said. <laughs> so I remembered him saying that, and uh, Michael had this green vest. So I said, look, I'm wearing I'll wear that. Can I borrow I want to wear that green vest tomorrow. And I wore it, won both races, broke the lap record. And uh, I've worn the green vest ever since.
Now, before you say it, this is my brother. <laughs> That's when you had some air there, Keith. <laughs> a bit lighter and all, then. What do you make of the road scene? I mean, some of the tracks are just horrendous to look mm. at. I mean, you did a few. I've raced on them all. I mean, you know, won the World Championship three times on them sort of circuits. And believe me, the TT was probably the best out of them. Finland, you had to... There's one line through one section of course, like, it's like racing around the industrial, an industrial estate in the, in a place called Kuvala. And there's two or three corners. I had to take a certain line to miss the manhole covers, you know, <laughs> big steel manhole covers. So. And, and if you crash, there was just a big ditch at the side of every corner. So that was really scary. And then the one in Portugal, uh, you had to go across a bridge with about a hundred foot drop at either side. And then you used to go across the tram lines as well. And we, one race had actually stopped because the train was coming in, in one year. Um, it's just incredible. I mean, the, you know, nobody would know about this back home, you know what I mean? But uh, they were scary racetracks. I mean, the TT was safe in comparison to some of these tracks. You reckon? 37 and three quarter miles and an average of over 120 mile an hour, I beg to differ. Yeah, but at least there are no trains coming. <laughs> I'm sure we can arrange it for you if you want to make a comeback. <laughs> yeah, really do. How do you remember everything? Uh, you go there for a couple of years. Everyone's different. I think someone like Steve Islock picks up straight away was to me it took me three years to figure out where I was going and just learn every sort of curb tree post and you know sheep <laughs> yeah with the emphasis on sheep we'll move on then it's strange I can still remember it all now if I were to go back there now there are probably only about two or three corners that I've been unsure of and, and it all come back to me straight away for sure Flick said you were fast around this corner because it was uh, <laughs> driving past the bar when it was your round. I've hit them bills a few times and all there. Just about stayed on. I don't know why, but in my mind somewhere, I can imagine you as Jack the Lad, you know, oh, showing we just, off outside the pub. I remember stuff we do, we did then, and I think, I don't, I can't believe I'm still here now. You know, we we playing games of chicken, whereas you, you go down like one road with like a lot of junctions, you know, going across it. We had to stop, obviously, but we just sort of just go flying through them all. You know, and it just could have been the car coming the other way because they had right away. We didn't. It just smashed right into us and been killed. You know, just stuff you look back and think, how the hell, why did I do it? And, you know, how the hell did they get away with it? Everybody has a favourite stretch of road that they like scratching around on a road bike. Did you have one? Do you have one? And then, it, funny enough, it, it was just the road where I live on. Because um, it, <coughs> it was the only road, because it's a big hill here down to my house, as you know. Yeah, but it's only four foot wide. I know, that's probably why. You see, <laughs> on, a, on an MB50, 50cc Honda, uh, coming down the huge hill like that, <laughs> trying to get the thing to touch 50 mile an hour. You could just, right at the bottom, just get to 50 mile an hour for you to try and break it around that, the really nice bends, as you know, on the way down the house, which are narrow, but fairly smooth. Uh, but it felt like it was fast because the road was so narrow and the, the straight drop down to it, you could get the bike to like ping its head off, trying to do 50 miles an hour. It was, uh, that was funny, I, I ended up living on the, the, the road that I used to come on the, on a, on a scooter and uh, you know moped and try and you know break lap records. Red mist. Of course, you are a complete angel, Carl. You never lose your temper, never lose your rag, never see the red mist. So what happened with uh, Keely at Assen? He saw it, not me. Um, I don't know. He was just frustrated. I mean. The actual incident itself wasn't really an incident as far as I'm concerned. I just outbreak the guy uh, and he just got frustrated. I think he, he realised he had to beat me for a, a shot at the world title that year. This is going to be dramatic. Call on, inside. on the brakes, underneath Keeley. Oh, oh, he's down. Keeley goes down. I didn't even know he crashed until I'd gone over the line and looked back. I thought, where is he? I didn't even know he crashed until I'd finished my starting lap punching the air and waving the, the flag of St George and all that stuff and then as I go come into the pit lane I see him walking towards me and I thought well he didn't look too happy he, was, uh, he must have crashed. <laughs> he's coming towards me and I'm like he's pointing and obviously I can't hear what he's saying and I'm like what are you on about just sort of pass you like what do you want you know next thing he's, th he's throwing a punch just a top advisor and next thing everyone's sort of scuffling around and dragging it apart and I just thought what an idiot, what the, what the hell's he on about? I didn't do anything, I just passed him fair and square. And I said, I'm just passing him, like, he's pointed it back at track where I'd obviously gone wide and, and nearly hit each other. So I just uh, made things worse by starting to do a burnout, giving him the finger, and uh, it all got a bit, it all got exciting, and uh, it carried it on into the final round of the World Championship. But uh, yeah, 
he lost it more than what I did for sure. Okay, not he, that you have never done anything quite oh, as bad nothing, as that. Oh, nothing, not course. at all, I mean, never. Like, um, there was one, one occasion. Yeah, suicide mission that I'm just about to bring to your attention. <laughs> uh, John Kaczynski, I mean, you always wanted to hit him, didn't you? Except that one. <laughs> yeah. Talk us through it. You obviously talking about Austria, 1997. Uh -huh. That's only the, that's the one time I think I did lose it. Uh, yeah, of course. That's the only one we've got on film. To say the least, that's the only time. Anyway, he braked really late, and I was braked as late as I could, and I hesitated. I should. What I, I was thinking of, like, go through, clip him, knock him off. You know, it was a stupid thing to think of, and I was actually thinking that at the time. It's the only time I ever thought of that. What, knocking someone off? Yeah, just to go up the inside of him and clip him, upset him, maybe knock him off. It would have upset and him. Knocked him wide or whatever. And uh, the little angel appeared inside him and said, don't do that, that's, that's nasty, it's a horrible thing to do. <laughs> and I braked even harder. And what I should have let go of the brakes, ran through, probably clipped him, upset him, and we both would have stayed on. But I changed my mind, I thought, no, I'm not knocking him off. And I braked as hard as I could, but I couldn't, obviously, avoid the front and the middle of him. I ended up clipping the back of his bike and knocking myself off and uh, he just rode off into distance and uh, pretty much clinched the championship because of that I think really but uh, that was the only time ever that I was frustrated because more so with the bike and the team than anything else and that was slipping away and it was to a little well it was a person like John Kosinski that I was, was, that say, was, that was, was losing it to was so yeah I lost it that day talking about getting it that right was the only time guilty of me <laughs> the only time never again <laughs> John Kaczynski, you know, when he decides to knock someone off, he does it oh, properly, Oh, yeah. Carl. Well, just a, about a month after, after the incident with me and John in, in Austria, he does it, but <laughs> he did it from such a, a long way back. It was just ridiculous. Well, even further back than you attempted oh, it. Oh, well, we were, like, neck and neck going into this, into this hairpin on the brakes. He was, like, two corners, three corners to go for Simon Crawford to win his first... And only. and only ever World Superbike race win. And Kaczynski just thought, no, I can still win this. It was like half a mile behind and decided just to take the last uh, second part as you came flat out <laughs> and use, um, use Crafer for grip. Surely John Kaczynski has got a heart. No. Surely he will let <laughs> no. Crafer, surely Simon Crafer will beat John Kaczynski into a pulp and take the win. Sure, I thought you were developing a soft heart there for a minute, Keith, and going no. a bit sentimental on me. Oh, Here he goes. Oh, Shot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, there is. Oh, what can I say? It uh, didn't work. Completely wiped Crafer out. We got badly injured, it had to be said. I think a broken collarbone and stuff. And Kaczynski went down. His luck finally run out that year. It was the first time he'd gone down all year, you know, and his luck had gone. And uh, he, he took Crafer out in a big style, and both of them ended up in the dirt. And uh, little old me comes wobbling through and wins the race and says, Thank you very much. So. Yeah, he did lose it that day, and uh, it's funny, in, in the first race, he almost knocked his teammate off, Aaron Slight, in a very similar situation at the same corner. Oh, take that! Oh. That's it, he's going for the 10th win, Kaczynski has had enough, he is going for Aaron Slight. The incident with Crafer, he came from so far behind to try and pass him, it was just ridiculous, I don't know what he was thinking, he had completely lost it, a lot worse than what I did at Austria. So what winds you up on the track? What's the, the major things to avoid Carl Fogarty with on the track? Um. <clears throat> I don't know. I think slow riders have always been a problem, for for sure. I mean, uh, I, I, I came together with one in, at the end of '99. At um, sorry, last year at um, Nurburgring, uh, clad with him, knocked <laughs> him flying. You know, I, I felt bad at the time, but I've seen it after on, on the video, and it looked quite funny. My mates, was, my mates thought it was hilarious when he saw him. <laughs> spinning, spinning down the track, you know, <laughs> and he get, and he got up. And he, he, he wasn't mad at me at all. He was going mad at the marshals because they didn't give me any... It was the incident in Germany where it was the same race where this th thing with the oil happened and the marshalling was absolutely terrible. So that's, again, it, that frustrates That makes you mad. And he was blazing mad because he, you know, he, wouldn't get, he weren't going to get out of my way. I had, to, I had to go through because I'd just get away from the second place. But knocking him flying, knocking flying surely was a bit extreme. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> Oops. Here's Walker and Hodgson at it again. This was Alton Park, and uh, it all ended in tears, Carl. Oh, right, yeah. This is where Neil comes across me outside here. Just clips Chris and away they both go. <laughs> so who do you think was at fault? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's Unusual just for you nobody's fault. Fa yeah, but it's one of those things that last corner, both want to win the race.
This was Silverstone. I'd say slightly more... <laughs> I don't know, again, I thought it was Reuchen's fault when I first saw that, but I'm thinking maybe not now. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me, I'm innocent, uh, it was that nasty know. git from Suzuki <laughs> was going through his head at the yeah. time. Uh, it's official, British Superbikes is a contact sport, by the way. Yeah, I could, oh, I'd say, I mean, circuits are very tight, I mean, there's not much room for the rides anyway. <laughs> this is my favourite one. <laughs> Talking of contact, and Aaron Slight and Hodgson again showing off their handbags. And you always thought Neil was such a nice guy. <laughs> and now then, some people take offence at the slightest things. He came right across on me going up the corkscrew there and just took my handlebar away from me. And that's not very fair racing, you know. I, I thought I respected him more than that. And he's just showing me how he can't win a race without doing something dirty just to slay you up. And, uh, but that's all right, paybacks are a bitch. So Harger in trouble again, do you remember this? Well, I saw it a few weeks later, but yeah, it was just it was just a racing thing. I mean, I think Troy was more upset that he lost the race more than anything. You've had trouble with the odd pass too. I like this guy, <laughs> he really gets wound up with you. Yeah, that was probably my, that's my last ever race that I finished, actually. Now, when racers, or in this case, ex-racer David Tadotti, lose it, they don't care about the odds, do they? Look at this. There's nothing, you can't beat a fiery <laughs> Italian. <laughs> to the inside, he knows that's where his teammate can get him, here comes Teukert up the inside and he gets him! Back comes Kellner, oh they're both down! The teammates take each other out, Kellner has hit Teukert and Schermann will win this race! The team cannot believe it! Kellner cannot believe what he has done! Well, there's one thing doing it at the front of the field, but when you decide to jump off in the middle of the pack... Yeah, first corner as well, I mean, that is, uh, you just have it, it's going to reek in it here, everywhere. Now then, we, we, saw, we saw your old boss, Tadotsi, <laughs> taking on the men in white coat. Seems you catty, yeah. Like the odd workout, yeah. The 1970s porn yeah. star team in yellow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at that guy there. He's, he's now, punch of the match comes up here. Virginio Ferrari, another yeah, one of your bosses. Wow, oh, yeah, that. good one, yeah. But he got one back, though, right? He, got, he had a black eye, so I remember that. Now look at Slick on the left keeping his distance. Slick's keeping his distance as well there. Right at the back. Yeah, he was uh, he was signalling me, I'm still out in the race. Then they brought in the home guard. Some of those guys have got guns. Oh, that's so funny. Now, we've bit more from the Burnley bruiser. <laughs> Here we go, I can't believe it. Watch it again, yeah, watch this. <laughs> no handbag this time, he decides to use his hands. Yeah. Emmett decides to... Uh... Oh, it's Emmett, I thought it was Reynolds. Oh uh, yeah, I remember this is at Donington, the end of uh, 99. Oh, there, we there we go, take that. Oh, oh a little cuff back as well, dear me. I'm going to tell my mum. <laughs> in Speedway, it gets even more temperamental. If you thought road racers were a touch touchy, then try talking to a short fuse Speedway rider. Ride hard, play hard, and make sure you're the last one standing. These boys do often proper fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some things are accidents and some things are on purpose. Take that. Oh, I bet you couldn't do that. I don't want to do that, kid. <laughs> oh. He's got an headache. Get out of here. And you, you can't play anymore. <laughs> I'm but, stick but, that radio but, right but, where but, it but, is. But, 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 but I want to play. <laughs> I want to race. Oh, f Now, there's no truth to the fact that they were going to have weight categories in Speedway next oh, year. Oh, here we go. Ollie Olsen, getting some more grief as ever. <laughs> Anybody done that to you? He's just trying to borrow his helmet, wasn't he? Rip his head off with the helmet, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mentioned Dugard before. Yeah. This is Dugard oh, Jr. I remember this one. I remember Good this right one. hand. Yeah, he just yeah he brought it from nowhere, that, hasn't he? Take that. Whoa. Let me try to give him one look. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. Scene. He got a lot mean as well. Oh, Thomas Gollard with Craig yeah. Boyce. Craig Boyce, sir. Uh, the giver. <laughs> That's incredible. They have more fights than the other motorsport, I know. <laughs> well, we're on the dirt now. First he steals the place, <laughs> then he steals the bike. <laughs> we buy it back, please. What do you make of the, uh, there was the camp flag marshal. Now take a look at this guy. This guy loses it, yeah. the, the checkered flag man. He it, just completely loses it. Oh yeah, completely gone. He just gets worse and worse and just starts attacking everybody with flags. <laughs> Never said anything like this. <laughs> Oops, I 
did it again. Well, crashing's not funny, but uh, sometimes it is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it's a bit of a contradiction, really. I mean, some of the crashes we've seen of yours have been quite funny. It's not funny when it happens to me, <laughs> but when others crash and get up and walk away, that's funny. <laughs> Which ones in particular have, have made you giggle? Any in particular that have made you laugh? Um, I can't think of any off the top of me. I think the ones that we usually end up someone crashing, go, running off the track, and it's one of them where they're sort of, others where someone's been knocked off going into the last corner. <laughs> It's so cruel. Unbelievable! Kilner cannot believe what he has done! But when you know they're alright, you think, oh, that's so funny. I mean, it's part of the reason people go and watch racing. There's obviously loads of different ways you can crash a motorcycle. I mean, describe some of them to us. Well, there's only two ways, really. Either lose a front end of the bike or you lose a rear end of the bike. That's the only way you're going to crash unless someone knocks you off. Uh, Actually, there's more ways than I thought. <laughs> if, the, if the bike seizes up and it throws you off, so I guess there are, there are a few ways, but it, I mean, the most painful way usually when you crash is when you high side the bike, you know, when you lose a front end, nine times out of ten, you're going to get up and walk away and have a mark on you. But describe, when you high side, describe a high side, how, how it is from your point of view, how, what, what the, the start of a high side and, and the, your way through it. Well, the start of it is when you, the back end of the bike breaks traction and like it, it sort of slides around, and I think. Probably in the old days when you used to race, <laughs> the, thing, the thing would carry on sliding and you'd just spin out. Um, but now, the way that, I don't know, the tyres, technology or whatever, the, the bike will slide to this point and then stop, grip, and then fire back that fast that, you know, it's crossed up this way and it's throwing you over, you know, over the top of the bike and that's where you land awkwardly and, you know, land painfully more times than not. And it doesn't matter what you ride, from one, two, fives, to Hager's Yamaha. Oh! Well, then there's Slight's Honda. Or well, for that matter, how about you on a Ducati? Yeah, that was painful. No grip in the air there. Or it could be an Aprilia. How about a flying Suzuki? Sometimes they just can't be saved. You can run. But you can't hide from a high side. <laughs> you strike it through a long track there. Do you ever blame tyres or anything along those lines when, when you've had a problem, when you've been slung off? I mean, is it ever anybody else's fault? <laughs> Other than your own? Shut up, Keith. <laughs> um, with tyres, all right, if you, the same thing happened to me at the beginning of this year. The one race I have done this year was uh, in Kyle Army. I changed tyres for the, for the second race. And I got three or four warnings that it wasn't right. But I could see me, I was the fastest guy out there in the second race, I was catching the leaders, I thought I can win the race, but I didn't listen to the warnings I was getting with the front end, I lost it three times, I thought, you know, what can I do? I thought, oh, sorry, push harder, you know, you can, you can win this. Down I went. Whoa! Down goes Carl Fogarty, we have lost the world champ! It was a tyre problem, but I knew about it, so it was my fault for, for overstepping the mark with, with a problem with the tyre, and that's the same with anybody, really. If you lose the rear end of the bike, uh, you know, a couple of times you think, oh, the tire's not so good, I'm going to have to settle for fourth or fifth or whatever. You don't listen to that, it's going to throw you off. So, you know, more times than not, it's your own fault. But Supercross and Motocross are probably my favourite sport after what I do. Um, they, they have got, that's all part of their game, is crash and get back on still winning races, whereas in my game, you don't, you don't crash and get back on and win. It never happens, but at that job, it, it happens regularly. You'd be a hard man to get back on after some of these that we're about to see. Take a look at this. And, uh, you have some oh, oh. Pain, painful looking oh. crashes, these boys. Look. Oh. <laughs> You'll never have children. Uh, <laughs> this bloke hates cameramen. Just let go of it. Right, Sorry, mate. <laughs> you never realise how much it hurts oh. until later. <laughs> Run over him. Uh, you just know these things are going to hurt. Like yeah. You jumps and get it wrong. Oh. Uh, that's then he gets mashed by the bike. Watch this, this guy. guy. Oh no, he's jumping over everybody. Sort that lot out. Yeah, you just take the whole lot down, don't you, in the first corner of Super Bowl. Look at the guy, look at this guy trying to get out of the way. He's <laughs> <laughs> sprinting away. Oh, 
Oh no, wow. painful. That, oh, it, cruciate ligament there has gone on it. Must have done. He was higher than you in Japan. Look at that. Knee joints. What about speedway? No brakes. Hmm, 65 scary. mile an hour sideways with no runoff. Wouldn't be allowed in road racing. I know, them boys have some big crashes and all. You know, I've never had a go at speedway. It's something I always fancy having a go at. What about the TT and road races? I mean, that, that, you've obviously said that uh, it's not the place to fall off anyway. No, it's not. You have to be a bit of an enthusiast, anything soft. Yeah, I mean, there are places you just never want to, you don't want to crash at all. I mean, you, you know as well as I do that the TT is, is that place. Um, you know, you can have one crash there and it will be your last crash. Um, you, you know, it's, it's not a, a Donington Park with nice grass to slide off into. It's uh, stone walls, lampposts, curbs, everything. Have you seen yeah, this? Yeah, it just misses that lamppost as Robert. Oh, God, that's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the TT is one place where you know, I race a lot and uh, I never crashed once, and you know, because I, I just knew that I couldn't afford to crash at this place. This is you, by the way, in case you forgot. The last ever crash. It finished me. The annoying thing is a bit about it, I can't remember anything. I was knocked out. Well, you weren't with us at this point when we look across here now. When you woke up, what, what were your first thoughts? I honestly can't remember, Keith. No, I, I remember waking up, I guess, in hospital about a day, day later on Monday and asking people why I'm here and what's happened. And to this day, I have no memory of that accident, the one that finished me up with. If you take a look on the medic's face here when uh, she gets to you, clearly she's worried. Yeah, I think she's... Uh, Carl, do you remember me from last year? She yeah. <laughs> she, I know his breath smells. <laughs> The fear of the unknown, though, you can see it on your team's faces. The missus does not look, um... Yeah, I've never seen this before. This is going to... It's weird watching this. It's really weird. How much do you remember pain? Does it influence the way you go next time out? No, it doesn't. That's the thing about racing bikes. I think if you if you remember how much uh, how painful it it was that crash, or that broken leg, or that broken wrist, you wouldn't get back on the bike again. Because when you have that crash, when I when I broke my wrist in Ockenheim, that was painful. I mean, when they reset that uh, half an hour later, there's about two doctors on top of me, or I'm two on bottom, and straighten straighten it back in. That was the most painful thing I could ever have ever has ever happened to me. You know, but if if I could remember that. When next time I got on a bike, you'd never race, you'd never ride again, you'd never go fast on one again. It's just that you have this thing where you get injured, you never want to race a bike again. As soon as the pain goes away, you can't wait to get, get out there again. And that's uh, maybe one of the things that makes motorcycle races a bit different than other sports. That they forget how much the pain hurts at the time of the injury, and that's why they can get back on and, and carry on where they left off. I'd like to say not all the crashes in this next segment were painful, but then I'd be lying. More than the pain, there is the embarrassment that goes with it. Oh, oh brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh. Hey, up. This is this is a gun. We uh, Ian's back on fire. <laughs> I'll park it next to the straw bales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll set the circuit on fire. <laughs> Oh, this is a classic. If James Bond could have this yeah, in their yeah, sequence. Yeah, this is good. The best thing about this is it just ignites at the right time. Just every, everything comes to a rest. It just fires up in flames. Perfect timing. Akira Yanagawa, Monza. One roasted Kawasaki. <laughs> some Be would say. Best thing for it, some yes. would say. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, yeah. but watch this. 69. Oh, no. Coming the other way. Oh. I like the commentary that went with it. Oh, what's going on there? <laughs> he hit his front brake, I think, on the back seat <laughs> of the other bike, locked the front up, did a stoppy, and then didn't stop. <laughs> I still want to get out there. <laughs> Just because I want to yeah. kill him. Oh, no. Harga again. Oh, that was pathetic. This is classic. He just, he just got offside at bike and... Oh, this is terrible. Oh, I didn't like this one. I, I had to come through the dust after this thing. Here are Yannick Hour again, get them wiped there. Yeah. yeah, that's right, he did. Big style. And I came in that corner with just dust everywhere. Well, you got a new set of teeth yeah. out of it. Oh, this is when uh, Corsa... Crash to put him out at World Championship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they best. The club crashes at best, aren't they? Oh, Aaron Slight ends up worst off. Harga started it. Yeah. Aaron finished it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, straight on his feet, he's a yeah. game boy. Oh yeah, he's one of those who crashes that always hangs onto the bike and gets back on if he can. Oh, Duffus, a Scottish um, effort here. Oh, oh no, not at Northwest. Not on a road circuit, please. No. <laughs> Gravel rash <laughs> coming up. <laughs> oh, that! Oh, he <laughs> burst into the bank. Oh no! More grip than he thought he was going to get. I was the fastest guy out there in the second race. I was catching the leaders. I thought I can win the race, but I didn't listen to the warnings I was getting with the front end. I lost it three times. And I thought, you know, what can I do? I thought, oh, sod it, push harder, you know. Down I went. Catholic. <laughs> oh, I hate that word. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Are you Adam? No, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Right, they kinda, I, have, I, have I have one just put in about that far. Well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> just put endings, put, just, uh, put, just that far, just put some dye in or something. And uh, I don't know what we're all I, about. I crashed actually. at Salzburg and I'm laying on a slab in a, they've it, it's the other end I've had problems with. Is it? Yeah. I've been poking it up here as opposed to I can't. Other. When, when I broke my leg and that, I couldn't have a <laughs> So after about a week, they just, and for some reason, they don't like giving you this, or to, you know, the solution uh, until it's absolutely, you're desperate. And they were like, oh, crying, tears in my eyes. And something popped out there. They finally, it's, couple of, it's in the book actually, it's a funny story. Anyway. <laughs> they shoved the tablets up my ass. And also there's like a, a bit of a <laughs> rumble and this everything just let go everywhere. <laughs> that was swinging it. it <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing were two teenage attractive nurses <laughs> cleaning me down. I just wanted to die. I just thought, just die now. I want to die. They're wiping all the off me. I had a broken leg and that was awful. Winning. The 
there's nothing quite like the feeling of winning a race, but have you got your freestyle celebration all worked out? Uh, it must be a great feeling. It's been so long, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get it right, your particular style of celebration is almost manic. Do you really sort of jump up and down the foot rest? I mean, what's going through your head at that point? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's the bit you've been working for all weekend, you know, just to win that race. It depends how you win. You know, if you, if you won a race where you've been leading for lap one and win it by six or seven seconds, and the celebrations probably aren't quite as, you know, exciting or, or as... <laughs> I don't know, jumping up and down as if you just win the race on the last corner, I think. Yeah, like Kaczynski in 96. I yeah, things like that. Yes, it's going to be Bogarty over the line. Oh. Bogarty wins. Depends how you win, if I, you know, which country and stuff like that. But I tend to really let my own emotions take over when I win. That's when I, I really sort of change from the guy um, that started the race, that started the weekend. Just, to, just let it all out, all the emotions, jump up and down, grab the nearest. Uh, English flag, uh, you know, I just, I just love it, you know. Sometimes uh, you get so emotional, you kind of suck the whole audience, television-wise and on site. I mean, particularly when you won that world championship in Phillip yeah. Island. I mean, the, yeah. the look of relief, we could even see it through your helmet. Yeah, that's right. And the same thing, exactly the same thing in Sugo in 98. Again, it's that long, hard year of racing, uh, going down to the very last race of the year to decide whether you're, you're going to become the champion of the world or not. And, and when that happens, it's just relief and the emotions and the tears, everything just come out, you know. Um, it's, you're somehow drained, you know. I, both times I felt drained at, uh, at the end of 94 and at the end of 98 in them circumstances. That I just, especially 98, so I just collapsed. I, I, I went around the first two corners and just stopped the bike and just sort of, you know, was really filling up inside and really, you know, striking basically on, on the bike. And uh, trying to build on my own before I went back to the, the pits and you know everything broke out, everything went mad. One of the things that seems to be synonymous with Carl Fogarty is uh, Cross of St George. I mean, mm. it uh, sticks in everybody's mind. You particularly have really sort of uh, got the old English flag up in the air at most circuits nowadays. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. It's something I feel very sort of patriotic about. It's you know I'm I'm English. I'm from England, and uh, I want everyone to know that. And you know since I started carrying the flag around. In probably around 95 when I could find one and uh, people sort of caught on to that, the, the followings caught on to that, that me picking this, this flag up, you know, it's got to be an English flag, that now you go to a race now and the, the whole, if brands act, is just English flags, you know, apart from the other one or two others, but it's, uh, every, it's caught on and, you know, it's become this, the thing that's associated with me now, the, you know, the, the, the Cross of St. George English flag, it's great, I love it. And now everyone's doing it. <laughs> They're following in your footsteps, Carl. Carl 
cunning stunts. You're used to controlling a bike at high speed and sometimes it looks pretty spectacular but what about stuntmen and their more disciplined forebears, the trials riders? Now these boys have got so much talent, it's incredible, but it's still boring for some reason. But they're gods <laughs> aren't they? They defy gravity. Have yeah. you ever tried this? No, I mean I know Dougie quite well and uh, I mean it's just, I mean, look at these guys, it's unbelievable. You can't even walk up there, they might ride a bike up it. I don't know. And they don't restrict themselves to man-made obstacles either, do they? They just climb. I mean, they go up the side of a wall, basically. The wall was as vertical as they go up. <laughs> but it's still boring. <laughs> Now, if you take a trials rider and abuse him at a young age, later he'll turn into a hooligan stunt rider. They'll ride any type of bike and even make the missus join in. Bet you don't do that with Michaela. Not that way round, anyway. <laughs> Mackenzie? Nah, too tall. And he's got underwear on. Even amateurs can practice for superstardom. All you need is deaf neighbours and a good lookout for the old Bill. Anybody recognise that bit of road? <laughs> Anybody recognise that left hand? He's got a finger on the clutch, he ain't even on a dick. Yeah. Can you imagine what this bloke on the left thing? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, yeah, that's brilliant. Oh, did you see that, Ethel? <laughs> <laughs> Oh How about this? Oh no, no, oh, man, this? That, I just don't fancy that at all. <laughs> With or without oh, bike? Dear. <laughs> I could definitely do that one. <laughs> Me too. It's a question of wanting to. <laughs> Which one of them did you do? None. <laughs> oh look. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe not. Oh go on then, I'll give it a go. I think it worried me, they already had the flag at half. <laughs> Drag him out. Is he the winner or is he drowned? <laughs> He's just been rescued and drowning. Here we go. <laughs> I love this that. This is brilliant. <laughs> but what I like about it is the way the police just <laughs> ignore everything going on. That's right. Oh. Have you ever been to McDonald's like this? Yeah, <laughs> no smoking. Please, she says. <laughs> the guy's pants, how bad are they? <laughs> What's this? What's this? <laughs> no! 
no. <laughs> Guess who this is? Go on. Guess who this is? Go Who's go fat? On. And would oh. ride one of those. Duckworth. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Adam Duckworth, surely. Those breasts. <laughs> Great shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I nearly got away with that. Did you get that? <laughs> Excellent. You got my helmet on. He has got a foggy replica on. <laughs> oh, you let me down, son. Oh, <laughs> take that. Oh, Bro. Good. Nice stockings. Yeah. Suit you then, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Now that is what we call Hell for Leather. I can't think of anything that's not cheesy at the end of this. That's it for Hell for Leather. We don't want to kill you. Mm. We recommend you don't ride your bike for at least an hour. Well, another is the same. <laughs> 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 and they come on to the straight out of clearways, and it's Hewan in second place, and he's passing Fogarty. He's going to outbreak Fogarty in the paddock. Hill bend. Fogarty goes behind Hewan. Hewan leads at Branshatch, and he's on a slower bike. He's a far superior rider today at Branshatch. That is incredible. Hewan leads. Doesn't he? In your dreams, you tosser.